Since its inception in 1945, when nine yachts competed, the Cruising Yacht Club of Australia's annual Sydney Hobart Yacht Rate has grown in stature and today is recognised as one of the yachting world's blue water classics. From Sydney Harbour, the 680-mile race takes its adventurous competitors south through the unpredictable Tasman Sea to the finishing line at Hobart. December the 26th, 1961, and the marina at the Cruising Yacht Club of Australia in Rushcutter Bay is packed, as well wishes farewell the record fleet of 35 yachts before they set out. This is the testing time. The climax of months of preparation for crews and ships. Last-minute adjustments are made. Last-minute instructions given, and it's hoist sails, cast off, and away to the starting line, and 680 miles of excitement as crews battle the elements to exert their supremacy over the turbulent Tasman. On board the starting boat, the Governor of New South Wales, Lieutenant General Sir Eric Woodward, fires the starting pistol. Winch in and away they go on the most dramatic Sydney Hobart race ever staged. Winston Churchill broke the start by 15 seconds and was forced to go around again. The spanking 22 knot southerly soon had the fleet flying towards Sydney Heads under leaden skies. The choppy conditions resulted in a slight reduction in spectator craft compared with previous years, but hundreds of thousands lined vantage points in Sydney Harbour to see the yachts get underway. Southern myths showed out early, but the 57-foot solo, your rig this year, flashed up alongside her with the fiberglass cutter Jansoon 2 also in the picture. With the southerly on their quarter, the yachts tore towards Sydney Heads. Then, just when it seemed the honour of first out of the Heads would go to Solo, the 73-foot schooner Astor, the largest yacht in the fleet, broke out her fisherman's topsail and inch by inch pegged Solo back. Astor, with her five sails drawing perfectly, overtook Solo near South Head, and to Astor went the honour of first to hit the open sea. Close behind came the 58-foot catch, Eilina, competing in her first Sydney Hobart. From South Head, the early pattern of the race emerged with the larger craft singling out from the smaller vessels. Here is Astor passing the Sow and Pig's Reef. Solo is close behind her. The bows of Astor fairly bounce into the heavy swell as she heads for the open water. The yawl, Winston Churchill, breaks out her jib and it's no job for anyone who objects to getting his feet wet. Solo is second to hit the open water. Winston Churchill, who had to recross the starting line, has closed on the leading yacht. The tiny Galatea F, at 29 feet the smallest boat in the race, has her mainsail reef rolled as she heads out. Solo is really ploughing her way to Tasmania now, but she hasn't got it all on her own. Yacht after yacht, their crew members braced against anything immovable, literally bash their way out Sydney heads. The first casualty, the tiny sloop Tani, returns to port with her reefing gear carried away. Later, the 35-foot sloop Patience also withdrew with her mainsail ripped to shreds. Eilina heads out. The leaders cleared the heads in a record 17 minutes. Silhouette beats out. This is no sport for the faint of heart. For the next 36 hours, men pit muscle and seamanship against the sea as they beat southward into the southerly. Brody, a 
Tasman Seabird class yacht is designed especially for the Sydney Hobart race. There is no let up for crews in this type of weather. The crew of Carol J reef sail in the wind, which at times reached 40 knots. At this stage, Solo led Astor by four miles, Jansoon was one and a half miles astern, Anitra fourth, Joanne Brodie fifth, Winston Churchill and Eilina. The Caltex radio relay ship Loriana is under bare poles and is relying on horsepower to keep in touch with the strung out fleet. The Tasman is a fickle jade. After 36 hours, the howling southerly gives way to a mild nor'easter and crews take advantage of the weather change to check gear and snatch a well-earned rest. Points perpendicular on the New South Wales coast and the Caltex radio relay vessel Loriana sights Las Olas. The 41-foot cutter is sailing serenely and the crew are taking it easy. Lena is hardly underway. Her mainsail was ripped during the night. Her crew have rigged an inverted jib in place of a mainsail. On deck, her crew have needles out repairing the rent in the mainsail. It's a case of so and so, and what a so and so. The 40-foot cutter Kintail is sailing well, her crew taking it easy on deck. Winston Churchill with the wind astern is also making good time. Yachts relay their positions three times daily to the Caltex radio relay ship Loriana, where they are collated and transmitted to the press centre at the Cruising Yacht Club in Sydney. Loriana overtakes the crack cutter Norla and the Anitra, her spinnaker out to catch every puff of the fluky breeze. Solo, inshore, leads Astor 40 miles to sea by four miles, then Winston Churchill, Norla, Anitra, Rival, Jansoon. Now the main fleet is into Bass Strait, where so many Sydney Hobart races have been won and lost. Jack Earl in his 36-foot yawl Maris is well in the running on handicap. There's no time for relaxation, however. New sails are set to try and coax just that little extra from the fickle breeze. The Caltex radio relay ship, Loriana, has reported to yachts that she is heading into a freak line squall. Sails are reaped, hatches batten down. Calm before the storm becomes a reality. Astor is a beam of Tasman light, leading solo by five miles. Then Winston Churchill, Anitra, Nola, Eilina, Jansoon, Rival. Another day, and Loriana's crew sight the 37-foot sloop Rival, at this stage running second place on handicap. Rival is sailing beautifully. Leading rival is the Joanne Brody, at this stage calculated to have a four-hour handicap break on the fleet. Joanne Brody is revealing her secret weapon, a spinnaker topsail. 
The luck of the game, a potent factor in the Sydney Hobart, was not with Joanne Brody. Later, she was hit by a freak squall which split her main spinnaker. Solo lost the lead to Aston near Tasman Light. Eilina, her mainsail repaired, was also making up for lost time. The dramatic battle for line honours between the big yachts was nearing its climax. Vic Meyer, with Solo, set a rum line for the entrance to Storm Bay. Graham Warner in Astor stood further out to sea. The offshore Astor caught the breeze which eluded Solo. At dawn in Storm Bay, Astor, maintaining her advantage over Solo, led by two miles into the Derwent River. Astor headed up the Derwent to the finishing line, her five sails drawing perfectly and sending her slicing towards the finish. Hers were the line honours for 1961. Astor arrived leaking badly from a sprung seam. The huge crowd lining Hobart's Constitution dock gave her crew a rousing welcome. Constitution dock, Astor's crew posed for photographers. 52 minutes later, and Solo entered Constitution dock. Rival from the Port Macquarie Yacht Club crosses the finishing line to become the winner on handicap. Her crew, toast owners, Albie Bergen and Nelson Rundle. In Constitution Dock, it's time for reminiscences. A time for repairs. A time for drying clothing and blankets. A time for recounting the most exciting Sydney Hobart race ever, with rival first, Jan Soong II second, and Joanne Brodie third, and line honours to Astor from Solo.